Hey there everybody, it's meteorologist Terry Swales. It's Tuesday, July 29th, and this is your weather briefing. And the sun is out, the temperatures are cool, and we've got another nice day going out there. There is some cool air aloft though, and after we get some heating going on here during the afternoon hours, there is going to be some fair weather cumulus clouds that pop up, and here and there there could be a sprinkle, but the sprinkles will be very, very widely scattered. Most of us will not see them and another nice day is anticipated around the Midwest. And this morning, wow, very crisp out there once again, all the way down to 51 degrees for the low temp here in the Quad Cities. That's the official reading, and that came within two degrees of tying the record low for the date. And you can see a lot of areas there in the low to mid 50s across the region this morning. Very cool temperatures for this time of year. And speaking of cool, that's exactly where our July is headed. Take a look at the top 10 coldest Julys. You'll see 1891 is number one at 69.2. And then you got 2009 at 69.3. And right behind that is 1992. So at this juncture of the month, 2014 is currently sitting in third place all time as far as coldest Julys are concerned. And I can assure you we are not going to warm beyond that. So at the very least, this will end up the third coldest July here in the Quad Cities. And with a couple more days, I think the temperatures may actually trend downward a little bit more. And we may give 2009 a run for its money here. But I think overall we're going to end up in third place as far as coldest Julys are concerned here in the Quad Cities. Let's take a look at where July sets here as far as temperatures go around the nation. And this is the temperature anomalies. And this is the thing I wanted to stress here, is how much of the country has experienced below normal temperatures. You can see from the Rockies, from Canada, the United States, down to the Gulf of Mexico, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, temperatures have been running 3 to 7 degrees below what is typical. And that is a massive departure, and much of the country has been saving big money on cooling bills this July. Now here's something that I also found quite interesting, and I made a post on this earlier. You take the temperatures that we're experiencing this July and compare them to what we were looking at in July of 2009, and there is some dramatic similarities here. Notice the coolness all the way from the Rockies into the eastern United States. Now here's something else that I find interesting. So we, we've got the similarities there as far as temperatures go. Also, if you looked at the ocean temperatures, sea surface temperatures out in the Pacific, those are real similar too from 2009 to 2014. We're also expected to develop a weak El Nino here as we get towards the fall months. We had that same thing going on in 2009. So to me, 2009 is a real excellent analog to give you a tip-off as to what you might expect as far as the upcoming winter is concerned. And I can tell you right here in, uh, in the Quad Cities, 2009 was a pretty tough winter. We had 47 inches of snow. The average temperature for the winter months was about 3.2 degrees below normal. And that all added up to a cold and snowy winter. So if this year is anything like 2009, uh, we can expect to see that type of winter around here. And I have seen a lot of things that are definitely pointing towards that. And at this point, I'm expecting this to be a fairly tough winter around the upper Midwest. So we shall see as we get towards fall and of course the upcoming winter in several months. Meantime, here is the storm track that we are expecting to see here on Sunday. You can still see the mean trough is in place over the eastern United States. All that area where you see blue, the blue is where heights are below normal and so below normal heights correlate to cooler than normal temperatures and I'm expecting readings to stay well below normal here as we go through the next eight days. Here is the forecasted temperature anomalies. Same story, nice and cool across the eastern two-thirds of the country. And believe it or not, don't see any big changes long range. The cool eases just a little bit, but still if you go out over the next 16 days and average out the temperatures, you can see how much of the country, especially here in the Midwest, is expected to be below normal on the temps. Now beyond this, getting out two weeks, there might be a little bit of a pattern change that finally allows some warmer weather back into the Midwest, but of course by then we're already into mid-August and the heat that uh, you would expect to see in the summer just isn't quite as strong as the sun's not as direct and the days are getting shorter. So the chances for any prolonged heat waves are rapidly vanishing in this summer 
And actually, this has been the summer of no summer, as far as I'm concerned, around the Midwest. Only one 90-degree day here in the Quad Cities. And to close things out today, we'll just take a quick look at precipitation here. And this is what the Weather Prediction Center is anticipating as far as rain over the next eight days. And as you can see, most of the rainfall of any consequence is confined to the upper Midwest from about Interstate 80 and the Quad Cities South. Amounts expected to be very light, if any. So overall, the pattern looks cool and dry and the weather real good here as we go through the next eight days. That's your weather briefing for today. Thanks for visiting tswales.com. And as always, roll weather.